baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And somebody say, and fire. And fire. I thought about that. It stuck with me. That fire. It stuck with me. Fire. In other words, in order for God to show up, sometimes we got to lay something on the altar so that God can put fire on it so that it can be able to, to meet the requirement that he's called for it to do. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. We want we want things from God without sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So the message today is simply sacrifice so that the fire of the Holy Spirit can live and thrive in our life. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to have the Holy Spirit, but we desire the fire. Somebody say fire. fire. Well, the title is sacrifice brings fire. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice brings fire. Fire. I looked at this and I stayed and said, Lord, I'm, I'm not understanding what you're saying. John said when he came on the scene, he said, now my time is at an end. Sometimes we get too comfortable in a certain place and God desires to put it in another, in another place where you're not familiar with. Am I, am I speaking to somebody Amen. in here? Amen. You know, you can get used to service being a certain way and, and the spirit of God want to take it to another level. But because we're not used to it, we're scared to move forward in the Lord. Mm -hmm. But somebody say, this is your season. This this is, your season. this is your season. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what's going on with you. I'm not in your home, but God is. And he said, the season that you have been going through, you're about to come out of. Amen. We're in a time now in this in this world, in this life, that how many know that Jesus is soon to come? Yes, he is. We better get ready, church. Come on, somebody say, somebody say look at your neighbor and say, be ready. Be ready. Don't get ready, but be ready. Be ready. And while you are being ready, continue to walk into the season that God has called you into. A lot of people are looking at their struggles right now. They're looking at their situation and they're coming to a sum total of their life when your life is not even over yet. Don't look at your life where it is right now. God desires to take you somewhere. Mm. And so now we read where it says that everything has a season and everything for the purpose it has, it will serve in your life. There's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a time to cry, there's a time to laugh. How many know that there's nothing permanent but a change? Yeah. As you live this life long enough, you have to understand that you're the same person, but that same person age. The fact is, I was this age last year. The fact is, I'm another age this year, but the truth is, I age. Amen. Are y'all hear me? Amen. The truth is that God is going to constantly always take you to the level where he wants to take you. Mm. And so there's a hunger, Pastor, to develop in my spirit to chase after God. Amen. There's a hunger in me to know the season and the reason why I'm here. Sister Lisa, I am not an accident, neither are you. You were born for a purpose. Amen. You were not born because your mother and father had nothing better to do. No, God allow us to be here. And if we are here, we serve a purpose. Amen. I want to say to you, young children and older people, you are not an accident and you're not a mistake. You are on purpose. Amen. So that God can fulfill his purpose in your life. Amen. Now, if there is a purpose in your life, that means that death cannot even kill the purpose that God has placed in you so now we can give God the glory. Stop waiting to get over our struggles and start praising him now because if God put purpose in me, death or the devil cannot kill me. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus says the gates of hell what shall not prevail against his church. This building he wasn't talking about he was talking about who? You and I. Amen. And so now, in order for this purpose to be recognized, you must have fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. In order to get warm, in order for there to be a revival, in order for there to be a quickening, there must be what? Fire. fire. But God never sends fire on an empty altar. Mm -hmm. In order for God to send fire or to aflame our life, there must be a sacrifice. Wow. There must be a denial. Mm -hmm. There must be a laying down our old ways yeah. and picking up, oh, come on, somebody, yeah. and picking up our new ways and allowing the fire of God to shine through us. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you really desire your family to be saved, if you really desire your friends to be saved, set yourself on fire and they will come to see you burn. Hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. people are always inquisitive about fire. They, they, they're drawn into it. They, they, they want to know what's happening. They're hoping that everything is okay. But if your life is not on fire, that means you haven't sacrificed anything. Jesus. 
And the church said, I'm not talking about singing on the choir. I'm not talking about being on the usher board. I'm talking about being in love with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about laying it all down. Paul says, forgetting those things, what? Which are behind. Come on. And somebody say, press. 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 In order to press, it Amen. takes a sacrifice. In order to press something had to lay on the altar when I, Abraham, and I'm going to get to Moses in a second because I like this about Moses. I believe that when we read this, we want to find ourselves in here. Amen. When God told Abraham, Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac, three day journey, and I want you to what? Offer him there. Are y'all hear me? Now, obedience is better than sacrifice, but the sacrifice is the obedience. In other words, in order for God to work his miracle and his love through us to help someone else, we first must give ourselves up. Amen, Bishop. But we only want to give ourselves up on Sundays. Whoa. When Monday, I got quiet on me. When Monday come, in, when Monday come, you know, all of a sudden we put God to the side and we pick up work. Come on, somebody. I thought I was gonna get a little bit more amen. Maybe. But 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 God is not a part time God. God wants to be in your business and everywhere you go all the time. Don't we say God is good? All and all the time But see we don't do that all the time Sometimes we say Lord you ain't with me today Because you know, I'm just going to be myself today we, Sometimes we put God on the shelf But this is not the season I heard the pastor say this is time to suit up Somebody say suit up Suit up in other words, this is the time that we must now. It's good to have the armor, but you can't do anything if you don't have the power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Whoa. Amen. Oh, y'all hear me? Amen. As I worked as a police officer in D.C., it was good that I had on the armor, the vest and everything. But if I did not have the authority, then it was no good to me. Amen. And God is suiting us up because the devil is getting mad because there's a shaking in the atmosphere. God is going to shake those leaders out of place who ain't doing nothing. And he's going to shake those leaders is in place Amen. who are going to set the soul of the church on fire Amen. to love God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's not church as usual anymore. Amen. Amen. We put God on a timer. How dare we put time on God when we give that the, the job 80 hours. We give our kids and our love, our marriage. All. No, no, no. Should we not give God our all? Amen. Amen, Bishop. Should we not? Is there a discussion? Should there be a debate? Should there be an argument whether or not I will serve God today or tomorrow? Amen. Somebody say, My season is here. My, My season, season is, is here. here. We like to stay in the familiar. We're yeah, trying yeah. to break the guy grandchild. He's sucking his thumb and we're trying to break it, but it's hard because he's gotten used to it becoming security blanket. Mm -hmm. And some of us have had, we got security blankets. Mm, Y'all gonna get quiet on me. Some security blankets over shopping. Some security blankets are overeating. Some security blankets are drugs or alcohol. Some, no, y'all not, y'all not listening yeah. to me. Yeah. Some security blankets are just, you know, uh, uh, feeling lonely or, 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 you know, doing something that you would just get your mind off it. We all have some type of security blanket. And when God wants to take it from us, all of a sudden we start to throw a tantrum because God is trying to move us from a child to an adult. Amen. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake, I, I, I thought I spake a child, but when I became a Man. I put what I do. I, I put. Away. Yeah. Do you not know that we got eighty-eight years old still acting like they're eleven? Yeah. The Paul says, "I would give you meat, but you're still talking like you're carnal. So yeah. I can't even give you what you could have. I got to continue to feel you. Come on, some some similac yeah. and some infamous. What yeah. is it called? Similac? What is it called? <laughs> Pro meal, bro. Whatever. Amen. So, so in other words, God desires to move us in another dimension. Let's go to Exodus here. I want to share this with you, Exodus. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. I feel the presence and the spirit of God. And I'm just going to share this with you. And then I'm going to sit down. Somebody say fire. 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 Here we go. I'm going to take this time. Moses. Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. He had been exiled from Egypt. He was the prince of Egypt. He built cities for Pharaoh. Are y'all hear me? Yes. He honored Pharaoh. Pharaoh was considered in those days a god. Mm -hmm. All right? He, they, they, ne they never probably seen Pharaoh bleed, but if a god bleed, then he's not a god. But they, in those days, felt that Pharaoh was God. Mm -hmm. So Moses learned hieroglyphics. He learned how to build. He walked in hall. He ate royalty, lived royalty. But now he finds himself in exile. 
Sometimes in order for God to do a work, sometimes he's got to remove us from the thing that would hold us right. to put us in a place to prepare us for a greater work that he has for Amen. us. So don't get mad at God if he takes some things from you that you're used to because he's trying to put you in another dimension where he can use you somewhere else. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it's time to let go of the security blanket. Yeah. Amen. And so Moses, 40 years, he murders a man because he sees his brother, he sees his, his own culture being uh, uh, humiliated, and so he steps in and he kills a master builder, and now he runs for his life. And he finds himself uh, uh, with Jethro and having married and now, but this is interesting because there was no change here. Moses fled out of fear. Mm. He didn't fly, he didn't flee, flee because he saw some glory in the sky, but he fled out of fear. Yeah. Sometimes God would allow fear to cause you to run into Him. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes, he will. Listen to this verse here. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the somebody the backside of a desert. The backside of a desert. And he came to the mountain of God even Herod. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, but it was not consumed. Moses, out of all this time, led the flock on the backside of a desert. God sometime will put you in an unknown place. <laughs> Not a known place. We, we like to be known. We like to be yes. popular. Yes, we do. But if God is going to do any kind of work in your life, yes. he's got to put you in a place where it's not known. Yes. And so Moses finds himself on the backside of a desert. Yes. We may not be on the main highway as a church, but I believe if we allow the fire of God to burn bright with his glory, people are going to want to know what's going on over here. And they're going to come and find out that the glory of God is shining in your life. But in order for the glory of God to be shining in your life, there must be a sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. The, the, the song says uh, we, we, we bring, come on, we bring the what? Sacrifice of Yes. So dad, he's walking in the wilderness and he says, listen now, he says, I, I, I looked up and now there's a bush that's burning, but this bush is not consumed. How is it that this bush is burning and it is not being burnt up? So it, to Moses, this was a great sign or a great sight to see. Let's look at the verse here. He says, uh, uh, verse, I think it's verse 3 And Moses says I will turn aside And see this great sight While the bush is not burnt I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you And I'm going to make this quick I'm here to tell you That if you desire For God to do anything In your life Let him set you on fire Amen, Amen. Amen. Look at your name and say God is not dead God is not dead He's alive yeah, I have to apologize because I'm in this mode that I'm so hungry, firstly. I'm so hungry for God. Yes. She mentioned last week that we need to suit up because the enemy is coming against the church. But here's the problem. The church is hungry, but they're not asking to be fed. Right. We got people that are sitting there and they're starving, but they refuse to open up their mouth and ask God for food that they may eat. See, we come to the house of God not to show what kind of suit we got on, but we come to the house of God to bring sacrifice of praise and to eat the bread of life so that when we go back out there, we'll be able to share the gospel with somebody else. But, but the Bible says that if you don't have any oil in your lamp, then there will be no fire in your life. Amen. We come into the house of God, but none of us don't want our lamps to be lit. We want to stay the same Way. We want to act the same way. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We want to continue to doubt and complain and murmur rather than God set us on fire so that somebody else can see and that somebody else can get the fire we got. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God says, I'm looking for someone that's looking for me. Amen. I'm looking for someone that has a compassion and a desire to find out who I am. Thank you, Jesus. I will turn aside. Don't you know God? Sometimes God will put things in front of you and you got to turn aside. You got to put down your work. You got to put down everything. And you got to find out what's burning on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I don't understand where it's you go into the house of God and everything is so rigid instead of God moving the way he wants to move. Jesus. Oh my God. In our homes, in our families. We're not only saved on Sundays, we should be saved every day. Amen. 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 So Moses yeah. had the flock. Wait a minute. I like this because. This is what God showed me. And I'm going to try not to cry because this is what happened to him. He did not get a change in the halls of Egypt, but he got his change on the backside of a desert. Stop looking for this big edifice. Stop looking for something grand when God wants to do something on the backside of a desert. Sometimes it may be in a barn with mules and, and chicken and hens rather than be in some type of mall or castle. God wants to fill you with this Fire. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're looking for this beautiful, you know, we're, we're looking for everything to be just oh so right. God is not looking for the right, He's looking for the wrong. Yes, He is. Yes. 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 God don't need anybody that already has it together. Right. Right. He needs somebody that don't have it together. Moses was married. He's on the backside of a desert. He, 40 years seemed to him to be wasted. And now he finds himself, instead of being the prince of Egypt, he's now taking care of some sheep and some goats. Yes. To go from this high point of job, I hope you hear me. Sometimes God will strip away the high things in your life to put you down low so that he can lift you back up. Because he's not going to give his grace to somebody that already got it together. I'm looking for the broken so that I may heal them. I'm looking for the country heart so that I may lift them up in due season. That's right. That's right. Jesus. That's why Jesus couldn't talk to the scribes and the Pharisees. Don't complain. Don't complain about what God is doing in your life right now. Yes. If you don't have money in the bank, give, give God praise anyhow. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you don't have the car you need, give yes. God yes. praise anyhow. Yes. If you don't have the mate that God sent yet, yes. still give God yes. praise right now. Yes. If ain't nobody saved but you and the family, still yes. give yes. God yes. praise yes. right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't complain yes. about where you are. Amen. Give a praise about where you're going. Yes. yes. Because on the other side of this test, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the song. On the other side of this trial, there is something waiting for Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. But the tendency, Pastor, we get stuck midway. Yeah. The children of Egypt, Israel, they were so hard pressed in their complaining that they wanted to go back to captivity. Isn't mm. that just like us? Mm. Somewhere the devil brings to our mind, you know, I was doing better when I was doing drugs. Yeah. I was Amen. doing better when I had him, even though he was abusing me. I was doing better when I had, come on somebody. I was doing better. It seemed like I could, I could get more money when I was doing this. The yeah. devil would always preach your sermon. You need to turn that radio off and put on the Bible radio and listen to the word of God Amen. so that you may be able to overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say sacrifice, sacrifice. brings fire. Brings fire. God set Moses up and he's setting you up. He told John that one's going to come that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We read in Ecclesiastes that this is the season. Somebody say purpose. Purpose. There's a season that's over. It doesn't mean you're over. It means your season is over. Your purpose is still alive. Amen. So don't compare your season to your purpose. Amen. Keep your purpose in what God has you for. Because whatever season you're in, good or bad, it shall pass. Amen. Hallelujah. But your purpose will remain. Hallelujah. Because we serve a purpose driven God. Amen. He loves us. And so if he's got things for you to do, death cannot even take it away. Amen. That's Amen. why the fire couldn't kill you. Because Amen. God pulled an angel beside you, saw that fire under there. So come on, somebody, because it ain't time for you to go yet. Amen. Hallelujah. 
You got work to do. You ain't going nowhere. I don't care if the doctor said there's nothing else we can do. Clap your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not dependent upon you. God knows the anatomy of the body better than any chief physician. Yes, he does. Come on, somebody. He embodies. He knows where you are. He knows where you live. The only thing he asks is that when he calls, we answer. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Tony, Moses find himself in no man's land. Y'all got to understand yes. this. Yes. Have anybody ever been in a place of prestige and been in a place where you're making a lot of money? Amen. But now you got a job Amen. or you got a place of making less than you Amen. ever made before. Yes. Yes. Come on, I know I ain't by myself. Amen, Come on, Bishop. man. Don't act like you've been having a job. I'm doing Amen. good. Well, I'm sorry to say, you know, God don't need you then. Maybe, you know, he don't need you. Are y'all hear me? Amen. He's looking for candidates. They're going to totally trust him. That's it. That's it. So now he found Moses. I said I was going to be quick, right, Tommy? So now he got Moses on the backside of the desert. I know, right? I got three. He's, he's on the backside of the desert. And so now Moses, God caused the bush to burn him. And the scripture does say, for our God is a consuming, consuming. fire. Did you not know that he can envelop your heart and envelop your soul, set you on fire without consuming you? Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes. So this miracle intrigued Moses because it was out of the norm. So wherever you are, God will have you do weird things that are just out of the norm. Mm -hmm. It's not what you're used to doing. Mm -hmm. God will show you things you don't know. So don't ever think you know more than God or mm -hmm. that you know God like that because he'll show you sides of himself you've never seen mm -hmm. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Moses never seen this before. So he says, I'm going to turn aside. Somebody say turn aside. Turn aside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will interrupt your life so you can fix your eyes on him. So now Moses now sees the fire and God, oh, we got to read this because I don't want us to miss this. Oh, where were my glasses at? My seeing eye dogs. Wait a minute. Listen. I don't want us to miss this. The, the, the verse here, it says, verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, I like that. When the Lord, every word of God has a reason. And when he saw that Moses turned aside, in other words, when he saw that Moses wanted to know, inquire, look into this thing that was happening That's before right. him, then God used the fire as a tool to draw Moses. Yes, he, he needs you to be that bush, to burn for him so that your family and friends can turn aside and see yes. that that situation you're in should have consumed you, but yes. you're still living. That that, that, that that debt that had you should have consumed you, but it didn't. Amen. That that friendship, that marriage, that situation, people talking about you, people turning their back, it should have drove you crazy, but you are not. Come on, somebody. I should be on Prozac, but I am not consumed. Man, it will cause people to come to you. You just got fired. You lost your job. You ain't got no money. And you sitting here with a smile on your face. I got to turn aside to see what's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will allow situations to be aflame to get somebody's attention. But here's what's happening. Rather than us giving glory to God, we sit there whipping and whining about what we're going through and the person walk away saying there's just somebody else that's all but when they come to us they should hear us giving God praise in the midst of our circumstances in the midst of our situation then they will say I want what you got can I get on fire with you hallelujah hallelujah amen amen yes don't complain about where you are God is allowing your situation to draw somebody else amen because when they see you go through, they're wondering how you survive. It should have consumed you. It should have burnt you up. You should have been outdoors. Oh, come on. So you should have been outdoors and you should have been walking. And listen, listen, there are many uh, uh, levels and facets of life where we should have been destroyed. But somebody say, but God. But God. But God. Sacrifice. Meaning that at the time we want to murmur and complain about the change of life. We should give him praise about the change amen. of life. That's right, amen. This is not a message. We need substance. See, the devil, the devil can't, you know, he, he's not moved by glitter. Mm -hmm. 
but he's moved by substance. Yes. And in the church today, you can shout and you can speak in tongues and you can do all those different things. But if you don't have those substance, the devil will come to you and you and he will look at you square in the face and say, your tongues don't move me. But if I find out you got word and power and spirit in you, then I can't yes. mess with yes. you. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So when you leave here today, you made the devil mad. You become a threat every day. You put your feet out on the floor because he don't like the fact that yes. you're praising God Amen. from where you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Moses saw the fire. He looked at it. And God saw that he turned aside. God is looking for those who are interested in him. Amen. And he called Moses out of the fire. Yes, he did. I believe God is calling someone today. Yes. He's called, don't you hear him? Amen. Thank you, God. He called Mary. And Mary answered. Yes, Lord. He called Isaiah. Isaiah answered. He called Samuel three times. Yes. Samuel answered. He called Moses twice. Yes, and God answered. Do we have the music up too loud that we can't hear? Do we have the complaint of life up too loud that we can't hear God? Do we have confusion turned up too high in our mind that we cannot hear the voice of God? Because there's a change coming in your season. When Moses responded and killed the master builder because he saw his brother, sometimes God allows those things to put us in a position where we have no one to depend upon but him. Am I by myself in this? Somebody say sacrifice brings fire. A lot of people want the blessing. They want the power. But they don't want to give up the sacrifice. Yeah. Jesus, yes. The Lord says, Moses. Moses. Moses says what? Here I am. Here am I. He says, now don't approach any further. Because the ground, the place that you're approaching, you can't approach like you used to. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Some of us are trying to approach God in our own way. You oh, got, you got to get God. this thing right. God's, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to kill you now. My God, my God. I want to, I want to feel you, but I don't want to kill you. God. So be careful how you approach. Come on, come on, Bishop. Don't come with lies and don't come with cons and twists to try to change my mind or my purpose yes. in your life. Yes. Watch how you approach me in the church. Say, hey, Amen. We, we got some great debaters in here. I tell you, boy, we got some great. Yeah. yeah. Go to God and got a story to tell them. Jesus. And God is laughing you like, really? 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 You really really you gonna tell me that? Really? I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. You ain't telling me nothing new. Jesus. So God says, be careful now because the way you're approaching me is what? Holy ground. Amen. Here's the change that happened to Moses. Here's the change that happened to us. In some place. In our unknown place, mm -hmm. at that place where no one is looking, at that place where you feel like you don't have the energy, Rob, brother Rob, you ever feel like you didn't have the energy to even cry out Jesus? Anybody been there? Amen. Didn't have the energy to cry Amen. out Jesus? Amen. God placed him at the bottom of the mountain. Listen, yeah. I like this. Yes, Lord. And he called him to the, to the top, top of the mountain. Yes, yes. Are y'all hear me? Yes. The Bible said, "Those that are high, I will bring low." Yeah. That's right. Those that are low, I will exalt in due time. Yes. The message today as we go into our communion, the message today is this, is that I'm hungry and thirsty for the Lord to turn me aside, to chase after him, and to allow the flames of his glory to be so bright. What is the flame? What was the fire? It was the passion. It was it was the it was it was the I'm sold out for Christ. Because then when people see the fire, no matter what you put on Facebook, no matter what you put in the newspaper, no matter what you put on the bulletin board, will shine more greater. That's right. Can't shine more greater than the glory of Jesus. God. Amen. Amen. Do you not know we, we make strategies how to win souls? We make strategies how to bring those in and our family members in. Let the fire flame amen. in you. Yes, amen. 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 Because people like to come and see what's burning. Yes, amen. they do. Huh? That's right. There he is. You know, nosiness gets you saved sometimes. Yes, it does. Not always gets you in trouble. Amen. amen. So, but, 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 but Moses got nosy. 
He want to know what's this? Now, I ain't never seen this before. Mm -hmm. I'm well learned. I ain't never seen this before. See. This is not a position. Because positions are not there. Mm. God is turning us aside. Jesus. Mm. We'll pause at this moment. There's a transition. Be ready for the transition and what God is doing. Yeah, and that he wants to use a people that are open for sacrifice. Yes. My, my final scripture for you is this. Romans 12. Now, this elder, this is from the hip. Because God gave this to me just now. So it wasn't no long study. This is from the hip. Y'all, you hear me? Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, it says, Brothers, I beseech you. Come on. Yes. That you what? Present, Present yourself a what? Amen. Living. Somebody say living. Living. He didn't say dead, did he? He said a living. He said living. Our God is not dead. So he desires for us to be a living sacrifice. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire is what draws. Fire is the heat. Fire purifies. Fire is symbolic of God and his brilliancy and his yes, glory. Yes. And if the glory of God, if we desire for it to happen, chase after him. And people will wonder where you're going to. Amen. They want to see what's going on. Well, you know what? It happened in the upper room. Amen. Mm -hmm. When they were up there praying. And they were up there. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost fell. And it was like cloven tongue as of fire, fire that set upon each of them. The fire, the people, it drew the people. Come on. Yes. It happened in 1906 on Azusa Street, California. Amen. They were in a bond, backside of a desert. Amen. Three people praying. The Holy Ghost fell. And for two or three years, there was no crime in the city. Amen. Hospitals yes. were shut down. Jesus. This is a documented truth. Amen. The Azusa, I believe that there's another revival about to happen. Amen. I don't know about you. But I'm taking the time to turn aside Amen. to see the bush that's burning. I'm turning aside to see this thing that is just, yeah. I'm seeing something of God that I've never seen before. Mm. He is wounding me to him so that he can empower me and yes. send me Hallelujah. back. Because when Moses came down the mountain, he said that his visage, his face was changed. The, the glory of the yes. Lord was on him. In other words, when he came in contact with the fire, he caught the fire and brought the fire down oh, the yes. mountain. Come on, somebody. We need to go into that unknown place and let God fill us so that he can take us into those known places to make a difference. Amen. And so as we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, well, come on. Righteousness. Righteousness. Oh my God. If we seek him, he said he'll add what? All other things that we just seek, we ain't got to ask for it. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're putting the cart before the horse. We want the things before we want him. Amen. But we can never put creation above the creator. Never. We can never make another golden calf. It's very easy to do. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we keep ourselves in a position. So this wasn't a jump off the wall where